And so what's kind of become a consensus amongst evolutionary biologists studying this question is that rather than vocal learning being a binary trait, which is something you either have or you don't have, more likely vocal learning is something that happens along a spectrum. So at one end we have animals like ourselves and parrots that are quite um, capable, that are able to do what we call high vocal learning. They can learn throughout their life and they can imitate all sorts of different noises. And at the other, other end of the spectrum would be something like our titipuanamu. It's a very simple uh, vocalization that it's able to do and it can't all of a sudden start singing like a tui. Instead what it's doing is just slightly changing its vocalizations to match the individuals around it. And that's probably important for the group because they have really complex social environments that they live in. They have these complicated social groups. And so we've got things that are probably all across that spectrum rather than just a yes or no. And that's kind of where the state of it is right now. We're seeing more and more that it's probably a spectrum. So in recent years, our understanding of where the evolution, where and when the evolution of vocal learning occurred has changed quite a lot. And in the last decade, it's become more and more clear that although we used to think that vocal learning evolved in the northern hemisphere, it actually evolved in the southern hemisphere, in Gondwana land. So it evolved in Australia and New Zealand Aotearoa, which is really interesting.